What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. I'm Carl Fisher and we are back on the 1931 Model A project. Today we're gonna get the dash finish welded in. Last time we finished welding this using our uh, tendon one welder. Check out that video if you haven't, it's the very last one. Today we're gonna weld this into the dash as well as get the whole dash welded in. It's gonna be a lot of controlling distortion with MIG welding. I'm not able to hammer this dash, so we're gonna MIG weld it and we're gonna try to make it not warp at all. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. Let's get into it. First thing I'm gonna do is just put this up here, get the MIG welder set up. I'm just gonna check every which way I can. Maybe I'll even get the laser for this. I've got just like one of those um, contractor lasers. It's like a self-leveling type deal. If you're gonna use one of those, keep in mind that it's self-leveling, so you must level the car. Something that uh, I've made the mistake before where you've got a dead perfect level line, but the car wasn't level, well, it isn't level anymore. So I'm gonna pull that out um, mostly just to get the line from the center of the windshield. I suspect that this hole is not perfectly in the right spot, and we're gonna be filling these three holes anyway. But basically I wanna line the laser up to the center of this windshield, and then I'll go to the center of my floor pan, and that center line will line this up perfect. We're gonna do that. I'll take the uh, brass out, take the gauge out, and then we'll get that thing tacked in place and make a plan for welding. All right, so we got the laser all lined up here, and uh, it actually is pretty centered in the hole itself, but the threaded hole that's behind this piece is a little bit offset. So with the trunk open, I was able to get a line shooting through here, and I do have a little bit of a mark. It's really hard to see. Maybe you guys can see that. I do have a center at the bottom and a center at the top, and I did level with uh, just a little jack stand here. Um, again, super dark. Sorry, guys, but uh, there is, <laughs> if you can see, a little stand right there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tack this thing in place while the lights are dark and I've got it all lined up. Okay, we're in there pretty good. This is all nice and square, level, everything's golden. I'm pretty much ready to weld. The other thing I've gotta do is just trim a little bit of the excess of where that came out. And this curved in, we've got a little bit of lip there. We're gonna have to spot in a little bit of a fill here. I would like to full weld this which means distortion control is a huge factor. So if you have not seen it before, maybe this is your first time on the channel. Basically my technique, we call it the stack attack. What it is is you're just stacking attack each time. That's how I like to control distortion and it gives you a chance to methodically map out the way that you're gonna attack the welding. It helps you just keep the distortion down. What I'm gonna do 
is I'm gonna tack probably every maybe inch or two. Then I will just hold in my hand a little air blower that we use. They're just like a, a brake line stuffed into a air blower. I just allow each tack to cool and just keep moving. The other thing that the air blower is doing is keeping all the metal around the tack cool so that this never heats up. Like if there's a bunch of heat in it, it would allow it to change shape and it would allow things to shrink. We're just gonna take our time and uh, we'll be able to get everything all the way along. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start doing that. I'm just using my Lincoln 175T. This is a, a very basic welder. And honestly, if you're building hot rods, that's all you really need. I got it off of uh, Marketplace for like 500 bucks, just as an extra welder. I keep 030 wire in it. I can do sheet metal with that and I can do chassis stuff. That's really all you need. A, a, a small 220 volt MIG welder will build entire cars. Let's get it done.
We got a bunch of the welding done. We're about three quarters of the way there. Some of the areas you saw that I might have gone a lot more than just a tack, I kind of ran a little bit of a bead, and that was just because I was confident that I wasn't going to warp it in that spot being so close to a uh, 90 degree edge and kind of on a compound curve. The way that this driver's side went down, I didn't get any warping at all, so I felt a little bit more confident here. There were some areas that had some gaps in here that were difficult because this piece, it seemed like that broken edge that was a little bit short. So I had some gaps in here that were a little bit ugly. So we're gonna have to uh, maybe use the grinding stone a little bit on a, on, a, on a regular grinder and try and kind of carve out and make sure that we get a nice smooth line. It's a little bit difficult sometimes when you're kind of shaping welds, right? But we'll get into that. So I'm gonna keep doing the stack attack technique on the rest of this. This, I believe, is very important to do it because it's kind of where all these um, merges are and kind of open joints, but it is going pretty good. I don't think that I've messed it up. We're almost there. And then it'll just be a ton of grinding. Okay, let's finish up this weld. We're all done welding. So the next step is gonna be grinding. Stuff like this, I have a difficult time with. I think that everybody probably does because you're grinding into a corner. It's kind of difficult to do with any kind of like paper flap wheel because it gets all messed up in there. So um, I like to just use a grinding disc, like, a, like a, an actual grinding disc on a grinder. I'll look through all the discs and see if one has like a nice radius or a sharp edge and then a radius or, or whatever. And I just slowly work my way through. I'm gonna shine a bunch of light up there so I can see really good. And I think this will be really, really tough. Other than that, when two planes meet, like there's a plane and a plane, I'll grind it just flat to that plane, just flat to this plane, and then I'll evenly radius it. I might even bust out a file a little bit on that just to try and make sure that this line looks really good. And then the same thing in here, I'm just gonna have to gingerly grind in there and try and radius it. And I'm gonna use Rolox to finish them off. Like this is uh, gonna take a while, <laughs> but it'll be worth it. Just a little quick insert in the video. If you have not checked out the Make It Custom Unleashed channel, I suggest you do. It's a lot of fun over there. We're gonna do a bunch of road trip footage, swap meets, all kinds of things outside the shop. What is it to, uh, live a life of custom. So uh, we'll see you over there, make it custom unleashed.
I've been using the, uh, the grinder here to flatten it out because this face is nice and flat. I'm kind of pressing it against and it's, and it's making sure that this stays nice and flat. I'm also kind of just using this and, uh, and radiusing the insides of this and it's working out really well. MIG weld leaves a lot, like it deposits a lot of metal, so there's a lot to grind. So I find if you just kind of like really let the grinder do the work and just slowly cut yourself a line through the weld that's smooth, you can just kind of like work that line, focus on some areas more than others that need more than others. Get a lot of material gone with the grinder first and it also kind of helps keep everything smooth. And then I go to a uh, three inch roll lock and then I'm also going to uh, cut the discs up, put them on my smaller roll lock and that way these curved areas will get radiused. Sometimes I even, if I really want to make it super pretty, I'll uh, take some of my sticky sandpaper that's like 120 or something and actually stick it to this and trim it out and then you could kind of do like a nice final pass. These are little stone wheels that uh, I've got a bunch of different kinds and they help get right into those corners or any of those weird spots. I mean, other than these, I'm just using the, the uh, roll lock discs and, uh, and the grinder, but to get into kind of tight, weird areas, these help. Heads up everybody, I'm coming to Australia for the Street Rod Federation Nationals happening in Western Australia. It's gonna be a lot of fun at the end of March, March 23rd and 4th. Come see me there. We're gonna do Q&A sessions. Uh, we're gonna do uh, demos. We're gonna do all kinds of stuff and uh, kind of hang out and have a great time and enjoy Australia. So thanks a lot, Australian Street Rod Federation for bringing me out and we will see you there.
We are done with our sanding and kind of metal finishing. Took this to 80 grit, I didn't go any further than that. I think that's plenty. I think 80 grit is a great place to stop because it's perfect for grabbing onto primer or whatever products you're gonna do next. Getting into the corners, I really like using those little stones I was showing you guys to, uh, to get into little detail spots like this. Other than that, it's just controlling yourself with a angle grinder to kind of groove out the corners of things like this. Take your time, cut the discs up, use Cubitron discs, like those 3M purple ones. I actually probably only used three for this entire thing. That's like a lot of welding. <laughs> just putting the dashing like over 10 feet of MIG welding. Hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of that. Maybe you learned something about uh, techniques for, for grinding MIG welding. I did use a file on these edges too. Once I cut it one way and cut it the other way, it was a sharp corner. I don't want that to be wobbly, so the flat blade of the file allows you to uh, keep that nice and uniform, and then I just kind of rolled it over to get this nice edge. What's next for me is that little brass plate that we had in there last time. I did find some cool switches at SoCal Speed Shop. Went by there today, got a uh, ignition switch and a couple of knobs for headlight switch, and then I'll probably do the heater. So I'm gonna install that next, and then we're gonna call this a done video and uh, a done dash. Next video, I did actually also pick up a steering column, steering wheel, and some stuff to do the steering on this thing. So I'm, I'm all revved up trying to get this car done. Let's uh, fill up the brass plate and get that mounted in there. And then I think that dash is done. do you think we are all finished up with the dash i love how it came out i love that little brass piece the little bits of details that we got going on in there the art deco look i think it kind of all works together i'm really excited with the progress that we're making and uh, excited to get on the next video i really want to get the steering done so that this car rolls steers you know just a little bit further each time we work on it. That being said, this is the end of the video. I'd love for you guys to come see me in uh, Mandurah, Western Australia for the Australian Street Rod Nationals 2024. It's March 
23rd and 4th, I believe. That's uh, going to be a lot of fun hanging out there. You'll be able to come see me. There's going to be a uh, Q&A sesh. Jordan from Bennett's Customs is also going to be there. Um, yeah, we're going to we're gonna do some demos as well and, uh, and just talk to you guys. So, um, yeah, hope to see you there. Also, the following weekend, I believe it's the Easter weekend, Jordan and myself are going to put on a small metal shaping class. This is a 10-person class. Uh, you can get the tickets on japanscustoms.com. We are going to build the profiling machine. So I've shipped 10 of these over to Bennett's Customs. So everybody takes home one of those machines. Everybody gets to uh, learn how to make the dies. We're going to use it in the class as well as the second day is going to be like a basics metal shaping class where we do, um, you know, some hand metal shaping techniques, shrink, stretch, form. We're going to use the planishing hammers, English wheels, profiling machines, power hammers even. And uh, I just want everybody to walk away with the understanding of shrink, stretch, form and the different ways that you can achieve that with the tools that you have available to you. Thanks a lot for watching Make It Custom, everybody. And if you have not yet subscribed, it would do me a great favor if you would. I've noticed 70% are not subscribed yet. It would really help the reach of the channel. So much appreciated if you take a second for that. And uh, Patreon, merch store, uh, japanscustoms.com and Make It Custom on Patreon. Um, thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.